Cuba remains on the state sponsor of terrorism list because the communist regime continues to support acts of terror. In addition to harboring terrorists from Latin America, Cuba is, Cuba is allied with America's adversaries, including Russia and China. The Cuban government remains in lockstep with these malign actors seeking to upend the global balance of power. And Cuba continues to support Venezuela's brutal dictatorship. The very same government whose leadership is, is wanted in the U.S. on narco-terrorism charges. Representative Salazar's Force Act will prohibit the Biden administration from remo removing Cuba from the SSOT list until they meet a basic set of requirements. These are the same requirements that a bipartisan majority in Congress and President Bill Clinton agreed were necessary for lifting the U.S. embargo on Cuba's regime. That is legalizing political parties, labor unions, and free political uh, political prisoners, committing to holding free and fair elections. President Biden caved to the Cuban regime's request for U.S. foreign assistance, permitting the regime to reallocate funds towards its oppressive institutions. We cannot allow the Biden administration to continue to project weakness on the global stage by providing relief to the communist regime in Havana. I was in Miami I've been there many times, met firsthand with victims of the Castro regime. And I know many Cuban exiles who long to return to their home that was stolen from them. It's time to stop rewarding the Western Hemisphere's longest ruling communist dictatorship. I'm proud to support this critical piece of legislation, and I commend my friend and colleague, Representative Salazar, for her Tyler's uh, efforts on behalf of the Cuban people. Is there any further discussion on the bill? Mr. Meeks is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me say I oppose this bill. And while I appreciate the sponsor's passion on these issues, and in fact, share her goals for a more free, prosperous, and democratic Cuba, I break with her on the best way to bring about these changes. My views on US engagement with Cuba are clear. I have been against policies which seek to further isolate and alienate the people of Cuba, and I've seen the impact of what establishing relationships with the people of Cuba can do in just a short time. During the Obama administration, the warming relations with Cuba inspired Cuban people to build private businesses, explore new opportunities, and organizing using social media and their own voices to do so. As an added benefit, engagement also strengthened the United States' credibility in the entire region. I oppose this bill on a number of other grounds. Most importantly, I believe it would deepen the wedge between the people of Cuba and the people of the United States on issues of mutual and global concern. Our partners in the region are also focused on these issues such as access to humanitarian support in times of crises, economic development, and the ability to recover from crises, especially in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic and the barrage of natural disasters which have caused the people of Cuba great hardship in recent months. I also oppose this bill because intelligence reviews have found no, and I repeat, no indication that the Cuban government provided weapons or, or paramilitary training to terrorist groups, contrary to what some believe, fa a failing or failing to be a democracy is not criteria for remaining on the list. It is not a democracy, but that does not mean that it is a terrorist country. Cuba was put back on the list by the Trump administration to intentionally complicate the United States and Cuban relations. The State Department's findings on Cuba in its annual report to Congress have failed to meet the standards for designation as a state sponsor of terror. The country simply does not meet the definition of state sponsor of terrorism. So putting Cuba on the list with North Korea, Iran, and Syria weakens the impact of what the list is intended to do, and that is to thwart the activities of those who have repeatedly provided support for acts 
of international terrorism. There are many countries around the world that fall short of the democratic and human rights requirements imposed by this legislation for Cuba to escape the state sponsor of terror lists. But we do not place them on the state sponsor of terrorism list for these shortcomings. There are many other tools in our foreign policy toolkit to demonstrate our disapproval, including assistance cutoffs, travel restrictions, trade controls, financial sanctions. We do not need to impose an inaccurate terror designation to signal our disapproval. Now, if we are serious about supporting the Cuban people and Cuba's aspiring entrepreneurs and facilitating the flow of information and communication, we need to remove barriers to engagement. The state sponsor of terrorism designation for Cuba impacts us all, whether direct or indirect. It gets in the way of the type of change we all want to see happen on the island, while also diminishing hope for a better day. Open relationships are a more powerful change agent than isolation. How do we know? We've isolated Cuba for over 60 years and nothing has changed. We saw the biggest change when we tried to improve the relations, which gave that communications that were important and what we saw taking the Cuban people to the streets. It is time for more carrots-based approach to the challenges being faced on the island. We know the incentives can work. Unfortunately, the Cuban people have bore the brunt when U.S. policy uses its sticks-only approach. Removing Cuba from the list and resuming normalized relations, which we've already seen, had and would improve the atmosphere for bilateral and multilateral dialogue on a wide range of issues of mutual interest. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen, yields. Uh, any further discussion on the bill? Uh, uh, the Chairman? author of the bill, Ms. Sal, is already recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Very brave and uh, on your part of having brought this um, bill to be considered in front of the committee. So that's why I'm proud this committee is considering H.R. 314, the FORCE Act, a bill I introduced to keep Cuba on the state sponsor of terrorism list until the Cuban regime adopts democratic reforms. Last week here in this hall, I pressed Secretary Blinken to answer whether Cuba had reached the high bar, high bar that it takes to be taken off that list, and he admitted clearly that it has not. So I'm assuming that the Secretary of State is in full support of keeping Cuba on the list of state uh, sponsors of terrorism. And why is that? Because him and I and the whole world knows the truth that Cuba belongs on that list. And let me just explain some, just few of the details why it still belongs on that list. Um, Cuba's regime bankrolls foreign terrorist groups like the ELN in Colombia, like Maduro in Venezuela, in Bolivia, in Nicaragua, and every other dictator it could find in the hemisphere or in Africa. In 2019, this group attacked a police academy. I'm talking about the ELN in Colombia. It attacked a police academy, injuring 68 cadets and killing 22 others. In 2020, they carried 76 massacres 82 massacres the next year, and Cuba was there helping them. Just last month, it was reported that the ELN was planning more of these terror attacks. But Cuba just doesn't pay for terrorists or helps them. He holds, Cuba also hides them. Best example, the most important example, is an American fugitive called Joanne Chesimard from New Jersey. She, is, she was serving time for shooting a New Jersey police officer at point blank range, execution style. But for almost 40 years, 40, she has lived peacefully in Cuba. The FBI has asked the Cuban regime, specifically Fidel Castro, to send her back. Never. It never happened. Then we have William Morales, a bomb maker from Puerto Rico. He was implicated in over 50 bombings in the 70s. And in one of those bombings, he killed four people and maimed another 50 in the fire. 
When police went to arrest him, Morales said uh, very happily, they're not gonna hold me forever. And he was right. Cuba was there to welcome him with open arms, and he has lived in Cuba ever since. We cannot give the Castro regime an inch, and we are one bad decision away from Russia reopening the Lourdes spy, uh, spy base uh, in Cuba, uh, spy base in Cuba, only 90 miles off the coast of the United States. Therefore, taking Cuba off this list would be the beginning of the end of Latin America. Our hemisphere is already poisoned by the spies in Venezuela and Bolivia. The first act will put this decision back in the hands of Congress, who will ensure the Libertad Act is obey. And, um, and just to say a few more words, um, when o President Obama established relations with the Cuban regime, specifically with the Castro brothers, it was the perfect moment for that regime, as uh, um, uh, my colleague, Co Congressman Meeks, just pointed out. It was the perfect moment for the Castro regime to prove to the world that they really wanted to engage in the international economic community. President Obama gave everything in exchange of nothing. And three years later, the Castro regime did not open up, not even one inch, what we were expecting on the economic front, what Obama had expected. So it was a major disappointment for the foreign, for the foreign policy for the Obama administration to have given everything in good faith and received nothing back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. You know, I yield. Um, does any other member seek recognition? Mr. Mm -hmm. Sherman's recognized. This bill does not say that Cuba stays on the list until it stops supporting international terrorism. It says that Cuba stays on the list until it becomes a liberal democracy. That is bad anti-terrorism policy writ large and worldwide. If we turn to the world and say, if you're not a liberal democracy, we're putting you on the terrorist list and we're keeping you there, then why then, then a country has nothing to lose unless it's decided to become a liberal democracy, and at least 100 countries haven't. So we turn to these 100 countries that we have yet to convince to adopt democracy, freedom, uh, and liberty, and say, well, since you're not going to be a democracy, you're, an international, uh, you're on the international terrorist list. At that point, there are no further consequences to them actually supporting international terrorism. Uh, I think we should stick with the policy that has guided us and our international terrorism policy for at least two decades. The terrorism list is for those countries that engage in international terrorism on a substantial scale. Whether Cuba does or does not fit into that category is a reasonable debate. And if this uh, uh, resolution said keep Cuba on the list until Congress de determines that it is no longer engaged in international terrorism, that would be a reasonable approach. But instead, it says keep Cuba on the list until it becomes a liberal democracy with full freedom. I don't think that we can have a policy of saying that it, it, once you do that, you, a, you create a precedent that logic would require you apply to the rest of the world. So the terrorism list is for terrorist states. If Cuba uh, is a terrorist state, it should be on the list. Uh, if Cuba is no longer at some point a terrorist state, it should be off the list even if it doesn't uh, become a democracy. That doesn't mean that we don't do many, many things to try to bring democracy to Cuba. But the terrorism list is not something that we should apply to any one of the hundred countries in the world uh, that is not a democracy uh, but uh, uh, does not support terrorism. And with that, I yield back. Gentlemen, yield any further discussion on the bill? Mr. Perry's recognized. Thank the chairman. Wishful thinking. Wishful thinking, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. We, we all wish that Cuba wouldn't do the things it does, but relaxing the standard is just going to encourage more. We've seen it. We, 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 we've already seen this. We don't, we don't have to try it again to see that no good deed will go unpunished. We have tried with Cuba. So I support the gentlelady from Florida, Ms. Salazar's bill. Um, and she has clearly articulated, if you didn't listen to her, why 
Cuba remains a terrorist state. She's art articulated it. But included in that, even though she didn't articulate it, is the fact that Cuba hosts Lourdes, the largest listening post on the planet, operated by the Communist Party of China, pointed at the United States of America. And if that's not enough, co-located there is Torrens, where Moscow maintains their largest signals intelligence facility outside of their uh, outside of their geographic bounds of their country. Cuba does not have an army that we're concerned about, but they do have a biological warfare threat that exists and is real. And I'll remind everybody, it's 90 miles off the coast. Cuba enables the repressive systems in Venezuela and Nicaragua. It hijacks legitimate protests in Colombia and Chile that are, you know, that are striving to become communist nations. Listen, folks, a block of the United Socialist Republics in our hemisphere would be completely, completely counterproductive. The soft on crime, the, you know, let's all put a Che Covera t-shirt on and act like he was some kind of freedom fighting hero, quite honestly, it was absurd and ridiculous. It would be awesome if the members of this committee could agree that Cuba does not work in the best interest of the United States, quite honestly, it doesn't work in the best interest of humanity. And while we all agree, we all agree with the people of Cuba, the people of Cuba. When I was growing up in Miami, our neighbors, Cubans, were not only just our neighbors, they were close family friends. Their freedom, their livelihood, their property, their heritage stolen from them by Fidel Castro. That vision exists today in the leadership of Cuba, and to believe anything otherwise, I'm not sure what that is. I'm really not sure what that is. I, I hope it's just ignorant. Cuba, we're, we're not doing this to Cuba, by the way. I've heard, oh, you know, we, we punish Cuba, and we sanction Cuba, and this is all the United States' fault. No, this is Cuba's fault. This is the leadership of Cuba. It's not the people of Cuba. But they're never going to get out of it if we continue to help the leadership of Cuba, which, by the way, when we send them anything, we relax anything, they use it to their benefit, not to the people of Cuba's benefit, to their benefit. Understand how totalitarian regimes work. They're not waking up in the morning saying, how can we get the United States to help us so we can help our people? They're figuring out how can they can get the international community to help them stay in power and oppress their people. Let's not be part of that, ladies and gentlemen. I urge you to support and vote for the, uh, the uh, bill, and I yield the balance of my time to the gentleman from California, Mr. Rice. I thank the gentleman, and I don't want to make this go any longer than uh, necessary, because I believe that there, is, there are not just enough votes, but there is an overwhelming majority in support of this. I might just comment, my, my good friend, Mr. Sherman, uh, noted the details of what this bill does and doesn't do, and uh, and and he's technically correct, and I'm not going to disagree with him. But what I would say is that Congress, in my 23 years, we're perfectly capable of passing a law that says do this, don't do this, until they do that. And if they make even the smallest move toward freedom, toward not oppressing their people, toward not destabilizing the region, toward not... Uh, exporting terrorism throughout South and Central America, just the slightest, slightest move, I would be happy, and I hope that we're both still here in that time, and that it is soon, but I'd be happy to join the gentleman, from, my fellow gentleman from California in passing another bill that says we're going to uh, have an outreach and we're going to support an administration's outreach. But while we still have people who have permanent damage from having been bombarded through a somewhat unknown uh, brain injuring uh, uh, event because we went there and opened our arms to the Cuban government. We cannot do less than what we're doing today. So I'm a co sponsor, support it, and thank the gentleman for yielding. Yield back. Gentleman yields. Any further discussion? Mr. Cicilline is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm proud to represent a vibrant com uh, Cuban community in the state of Rhode Island. Cuban Americans represent some of the hardest working and brightest minds, not just in Rhode Island, but across our country. In 2016, I traveled with then-President Obama on his historic trip to Cuba as his administration charted a new course on U.S. policy towards Cuba. After 50 years of isolating Cuba, it was clear that U.S. foreign policy was not working. 
But through the Obama administration's actions, we began to see positive developments between our countries, including expanded cooperation on counterterrorism, counter counter-narcotics, coastal and marine protection, and more. While there remain many unresolved issues in the relationship between our two nations, these changes gave the United States more tools to promote positive changes for the Cuban people. The Biden administration has made it clear that standing up for democracy and human rights will remain at the center of U.S. foreign policy. But we can still engage with the Cuban government as you do with a number of other countries around the world we have significant differences with. And that's why I was so disappointed to see President Trump and his administration roll back President Obama's actions on Cuba. This included the relisting of Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism with the likes of Iran, Syria, and North Korea. Despite an intelligence review conducted in 2015 under President Obama showing that Cuba did not meet the statutory definition to be on that list. <clears throat> the classification of a country as a state sponsor of terrorism should always be led by the facts, not politics. The actions carried out by the Trump administration less than 10 days before the 2021 inauguration of a new president weakens our credibility and really delegitimizes the state sponsor of terrorism list. And so as my colleague, Mr. Sherman, made clear, this is not a list of countries that aren't democracies. That would be a very long list. We have very robust relationships with many countries that are not democracies. And we should always continue to promote democracy in every part of the world that we can. But this is a very different designation. This is a state sponsor of terrorism. There's a definition for that. And there are three countries on it that have been repeatedly engaged in acts of terrorism around the world, Iran, Syria, and North Korea. We ought to take that seriously. We ought not undermine and delegitimize those classifications, which means something very, very specific, just because we have a longstanding disagreement with Cuba about their governance. The requirements that are contained in this proposal are very specific. It requires uh, the development and sustaining of a very strong liberal democracy. Uh, there are many countries that we deal with on a very regular basis that would not meet this definition, maybe as many as 100. But there's value in ongoing diplomatic relationships and uh, work that we can do to improve the lives of residents of those respective countries. So um, I, I think this is a very, very dangerous precedent. If we're going to lump on a list of state sponsors of terrorism, countries that in fact are not meeting the statutory definition, countries that don't meet it as Iran has, Syria has, and North Korea, I think it makes a mockery of that very serious designation and is very counterproductive and will prevent us from continuing to engage with countries like Cuba in an effort to promote democracy and free speech and free and fair elections, et cetera. So I think this is a terrible idea. I have tremendous respect for the res sponsor of this, but I urge my colleagues to vote no, and I yield back. Gentlemen, yields any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Heisinger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will make a couple of comments and then uh, yield to my colleague uh, from Florida. Um, you know, my, uh, my colleague from Rhode Island just had said, you know, this is about a, quote, disagreement about their governance. This is far more than a disagreement about their governance. Uh, last week, we had a hearing regarding the oppression of the Ortega regime in Nicaragua, where they're literally throwing church leaders and political opponents in jail. Who are they supported by? Cuba. It seems to me, Mr. Chairman, that's a definition of a state sponsor of terrorism. And to me, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and supports terrorism, as a, it's a state sponsor of terror. So why would we not say that? And I asked the, this question somewhat rhetorically. When has the Castro regime ever actually helped battle terrorism? They are there supporting the terrorists, both economically as well as in, through encouragement and work through various agencies around the world. So I, I couldn't help, and I'll finish with this and, and pass it off to my colleague, I, I couldn't help but notice our next bill is dealing with Haiti, rightfully so. We are going to try to root out uh, corruption and illegal activity, and we're going to put sanctions on those folks, and uh, that bill would require that, and a report to Congress, yet we're talking about rolling that back for Cuba. And I, I simply don't understand it. Now, I, uh, I, I, am, I am supporting Cuba 
because of those Cuban families that came to West Michigan supported by my Dutch Reformed Church after the, after the revolution. The Lugo family, the Cortina family, the Flores family, the Caro family. That's why we cannot forget. And I'd like to yield to my colleague from Florida. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Huizenga. You know, it's, the Cuba issue is, is very, uh, it's very dear to me because I represent the city of Miami where you have two million Cuban Americans who escaped probably the worst revolution that the Americas has seen since the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1492. We're talking about the Cuba that Fidel Castro was able to elevate repressive methods to scientific levels. We're talking about uh, a revolution that has been able to take away the spirituality, uh, the human fiber from the average Cuban. So I speak from the heart because I represent them. And, and I am, I respectfully, I disagree with the chairman uh, and with other colleagues on, on the other side that do not agree with this, with this amendment, is that Cuba is a very bad actor. And if we give them one inch, they will take the whole body. If, if we allow, for the, if we give, send the message to the Chinese and to the Russians that the Lourdes spy base is going to be up and up for business, we're going to have not one Chinese balloon. We could have many Russian balloons and Chinese balloons because Cuba is dying to harm the United States in any way, shape, or form. Not only the United States, but through being proxy, like my, my colleague said, in Nicaragua, in, Nic in Honduras, in Central America, in the Sandinistas, in Maduro, in Bolivia, any way Cuba could find to harm the United States and to spread communism, it will be there. Will be there. But even more so, they terrorize their own people. Uh, like, I'm not sure if you guys know, but for instance, Cuba is in the business of human trafficking. You send doctors to the different missions, the doctors get paid $10,000 a month, and the, the, uh, the, the country that receives those doctors needs to pay that salary back to the Cuban regime, and the Dr. Mays makes $200 out of 10,000. That is called human trafficking, and that's one of my causes right now with Mexico, saying to uh, the president of Mexico, you cannot have on your soil uh, human slaves. There are 55 minors who are in jail, kids that are 16, 17 years old, just because what was their, their, their crime? To scream freedom on the streets of Havana. The average Cuban makes 12 cents, 12 cents a day. We're only 90 miles away from the most important economic power in the world. Cuba had the per capita income of Italy in 1960. So we're talking about that we're dealing with a very evil, pernicious uh, regime, and we should not reward them to take them off that list. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Don't I yield any further discussion on the bill? Mr. Lawler is recognized. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, let me, uh, if the gentleman will yield, uh, Ms. Um, Cod Lottery Duff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> um, I would like to speak to H.R. Uh, 314. I represent a small but vibrant Cuban community in my district, and I must strongly oppose this bill, it reflects a failed performative policy toward Cuba that does nothing to advance uh, U.S. interests and actively harms the very Cuban people we've been talking about. Codifying Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism, a criteria satisfied only by the most malign actors that it objectively does not meet, indicates that U.S. policy toward Cuba isn't about liberalization or the protection of human rights, it's about politically driven punishment. For one, this designation actively thwarts the liberalization that the United States is seeking, as my colleague from the Valley so eloquently stated. It restricts the financial transactions that would allow everyday Cubans to open businesses and engage in trade and investment, stifling the private sector growth that could promote greater freedom in the country, impeding travel and academic exchanges that would enable U.S. institutions to support activists, artists, scholars, and journalists opposed to the regime, 
and critically, it is a major barrier for humanitarian and faith-based organizations to provide much-needed aid for the compounding crisis the Cuban people are facing. As it relates to the acts of terrorism, evidence has not really been provided by us to even support this designation. And if we are going to put countries on the list that harbor fugitives or terrorists, we have a very long list of countries we could add. In fact, many of them have been listed today. You could add Colombia or Venezuela or Nicaragua. Nicaragua. You could add France for harboring Roman Polanski or even England or Ecuador for Julian Assange, but we, we are not doing that. So anyone who cares about supporting the Cuban people and promoting a path to liberalization and normalization in the country should oppose this measure. And I urge my colleagues to vote against this bill. And with that, I yield back. Will the gentlelady yield? Will the gentlelady from California yield the remaining part of her time? Yes, I will. Thank you. I just want to quickly make the point. We're saying Cuba should be on the terrorist list because it cooperates with bad governments, evil governments in Nicaragua, China, Venezuela, and Russia. You know who's not on the terrorist list? The governments of Nicaragua, China, Venezuela, and Russia. So to say that Cuba should be on the list for hosting a Chinese listening post when China isn't on the list for operating that post seems a, a little selective. And with that, I will yield the uh, time back to the lady from, uh, for the, the, the gentlelady from California. Thank you so much, and I yield back the balance of my time. You said it most gentlelady, eloquently. Gentlelady yields. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Lawler is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In response to my colleague, I would just say then maybe we should have that discussion about those other countries. But my wife comes from Moldova, a former satellite Soviet state uh, that has been corrupted uh, by Russian influence for years since the collapse of the Soviet Union. This body uh, took action, recently uh, applying sanctions on individuals uh, for financial corruption uh, and, and other uh, associated crimes. Because we, as the leader of the free world, have an obligation to root out corruption and to take on bad actors. This body and my colleague who puts uh, this bill forward, put a resolution on the floor condemning socialism and the horrors of it. 86 Democrats voted against that. 14 of them couldn't find their way to the House floor to vote. A hundred people on the other side of the aisle couldn't be bothered co to condemn socialism. There are bad actors in the world. Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and yes, Cuba. The Castro regime and the Cuban government have been oppressing the Cuban people for generations. They have engaged in ill-advised conduct and been party, going back to the beginnings of the Cold War, to acts of aggression against the United States. They continue to cooperate with bad actors and terrorist regimes throughout the world. And this bill is simply saying that the president should not remove them from the list until such time that the Cuban government has become more democratic. We are a democracy, a democratic republic. We should act like it. We should embrace it. And we should not continue to allow bad actors to get away with whatever they want. This administration has been pathetically weak 
when it comes to taking on bad actors. China can fly a spy balloon across the entire continental United States without any repercussion. Russia can shoot down one of our drones without any repercussion. Now, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle twist themselves into knots trying to explain away socialism, communism, dictatorships. And it's embarrassingly pathetic. So I encourage all of my colleagues to support this bill and continue to hold Cuba accountable for their bad acts until such time as they can finally see the light and treat their own residents, their own citizens, with the dignity and the decency that they deserve. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Any further discussion? Mr. Self is recognized. I've heard the uh, distinction here between across the aisle, the people of Cuba, and on this side, the regime of Cuba. Uh, convincing them to adopt democracy was a phrase I heard from one of my colleagues across the aisle. You do not convince autocratic regimes to adopt democracy. Evil stalks the world. It continues to stalk the world, and dictators do not change simply because we want to convince them to adopt democracy. Uh, I also heard the phrase warming relations with Cuba during uh, the Obama administration. Uh, I will remind people that the Obama administration also had warming relations with Iran through the JCPOA uh, and I understand it was not just the U.S., but it was led by the U.S. to return at least $50 billion to Iran. And Iran is certainly on this list and should remain on this list. And Cuba should remain on this list as well uh, because it is a dictatorship and it does support terrorism. And we're not talking about a terrorist state, which I also heard. It is a state sponsoring uh, nation. So I am firmly uh, committed to this bill. I yield back. Gentleman yields any further discussion. Mr. Mills is recognized. I want to point out a couple of things that we keep talking about here, and I, the same countries that continue to get notified, which is the Iran, North Korea, China, Russia, the geopolitical alignment that we already know has formed, and who is actually one of the biggest advocates of malign activities, whether that be from a kinetic response, as we're seeing with Russia and Ukraine, whether that be with China's continual aggression from an economic and resource perspective. The one thing is very clear. Chairman Xi has continued to try and you know, outreach to expand his global mechanism to strangle the American people. And it is a target on the Western Hemisphere, on, on the West, in our hemisphere. We have seen this, as my colleague has properly pointed out, with regard to the expansion of the Chavez of Venezuela, or Pedro in Colombia, or in Honduras, who just separated their ties with Taiwan at China's behest. We are seeing a continuation of the stronghold to cut off Western Hemisphere supply chain, whether that be through the Eurasian expansion, Asia and Africa, or sorry, I said Oceania and Africa take over for the Road and Belt Initiative, or the increased taxation and tariffs and control of the Panama Canal. Or what about the 500 football field sized uh, satellite that is sitting in our own hemisphere, as my colleague, Ms. Salazar, has pointed out multiple times that the State Department and others do not even recognize. We keep talking about terrorism as if it has to only be in a kinetic element. But we have to understand that terrorism can also be through cyber terrorism. It can also be through the threats and the terroristic capabilities of trying to cut off food supply, as we're seeing, or supply chain to the West the economic coercion that is undermining the United States continually. And we have seen time and time again 
as my colleague from Texas pointed out with the failed resolution 2231 or JCPOA where we reward people thinking it's going to take them off of the state sponsor of terrorism when in fact they were in continual violations they being Iran when it came to small and mid-range ballistic missile capabilities being shuttled across into Yemen utilized by the Houthis and sponsoring terrorism there. So my point in all of this is to say we are continuing to see the malign activities building up more and more and more at the behest of China and Russia, who is a very solid partnership with Cuba and has been for 50 and 60 plus years. And for my colleagues to continually ignore this and try and say that we need Cuba to act as if it's an individual malign actor is nonsense. I stand in strong support of Ms. Salazar's bill to fight the oppression until the reign of Castro ends. I support a democratic process for a free Cuba, which is what the Cuban people have been fighting for and who have been dis dissidents as a result of this. But the reality is this, and I will con correct one thing that one of my colleagues said. America is unique not because we are a democracy. We're not a democracy. We are a constitutional republic that protects our people. And until Cuba can do this and separate itself from the malign actors, they should remain on this list until anyone can prove to me otherwise. With that, I yield back. Gentlemen, yields any further discussion? There being no further discussion of the bill, the committee will move to consideration of amendments. Does any member wish to offer an amendment? Ranking member is recognized. I have an amendment at the desk. Court shall distribute the amendment. Clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 314, offered by Mr. Meeks of New York. Page 2, after line 8, insert the following. Waiver. The Without objection, further reading of the amendments dispensed with, the gentleman is recognized for five minutes on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I have a very simple amendment that I think that all of my colleagues should be able to support, and that's simply adding a waiver to this, to this legislation. As I stated at our first markup last month, there will not be a bipartisan sanctions legislation in this committee without a waiver of some sort included within the legislation. And I hold myself to this same standard. For example, I want a more aggressive sanctioning of corrupt leaders of Haiti and the criminal gangs that lead to anarchy and violence in the streets of Port-au-Prince and that my legislation on the markup would impose mandatory sanctions on such individuals. But I can't imagine times where we will need to work with unsalvory characters to make sure Haitians can access food and basic humanitarian assistance. And that's why in my bill, which we'll talk about later, there's a waiver. And that's why this bill needs one also. My amendment here applies basically the same standard that Chairman McCall applied to his bill in the Data Act. So it is something that I believe everyone on both sides of the aisle should be able to say yes to. Because in that one, we did. It simply would allow the president to waive the provisions of this legislation should 
should be, you know, it should be, should doing so be vital. If we waive it, and it's a vital interest to the Ameri to America's national security interests. And I, you know, on this, I genuinely hope that my amendment is something that we can look at and say, we care about the Cuban people. So we should waive certain things in these crises to help the Cuban people. So if this is really about the Cuban people, I would hope that everyone would be able to, would be able to support uh, this amendment. And I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields, any other members seek recognition? The uh, gentlelady, the author of the, the bill, Ms. Salazar, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, respectfully, I disagree with uh, Ranking Member uh, Meeks because this amendment undermines the bill that I am introducing because it prevents the law, which is the Liberda Act, or better known as the helms burton Law, from being followed. And basically, all that law says is that Cuba has to follow uh, some of the democratic rules, free speech, basic freedoms, political activity, uh, release political prisoners, free and fair elections, independent judiciary, trade unions and associations to be independent, simple stuff. What we have as a democracy and as a constitutional uh, democracy, as my colleague mentioned. So if we adopt or if we agree with your proposed um, amendment, HR 314, that will then do away with what we're presenting in this law, HR, HR 314. With the general and idea. it allows the national security interest to keep a communist dictatorship 90 miles away from the United States on the list. So I think it should be in the hands of Congress, just like the helms burton law is, and not in the hands of the president, because he could be swayed, not only this president, but any other, he could be swayed by political interests. And unfortunately, it's been 63 years that the Cuban people are in the hands of the most evil dictator that the Americas has seen, so that for that reason, I believe that your amendment should not be uh, considered. Thank you. I yield back. General Lady yields back. Any further discussion? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Representative Meeks, the ranking member. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it, and the amendment is not. Mr. Agreed. Chairman, I'm not going to ask for a roll call vote. Uh, Roll call vote has been requested pursuant to the chair's previous announcement. This vote will be postponed. Are there any further amendments? Ms. Kamlager Dove is recognized. I have an amendment at the desk. Uh, clerk shall distribute the amendment. The clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to HR 314, offered by Ms. Kalmager Dove of California, page two, beginning on line five. Strike. Objection, further reading of the amendments dispensed with. The general age recognized for five minutes on her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as we've discussed, HR 13, 314, uh, a ties the removal of Cuba's state sponsor of terrorism designation to conditions that have nothing to do with the support for terrorism. This would evidently weaken any incentive to change alleged terrorism-related behavior because doing so would not result in the lifting of the SSOT sanctions. My amendment would simply strike these counterproductive requirements and make the designation conditioned solely on meeting SSOT criteria. Anyone who believes that Cuba would legitimately qualify for this classification should support my amendment. I've made it easy. 
Given that an exhaustive review by the intelligence community in 2015 concluded that Cuba was not in fact an actor similar to North Korea, Iran, or Syria, this amendment highlights the attempted weaponization of the SSOT for punitive, politically driven purposes. I urge all of my colleagues to support this common sense amendment, and I yield back. General Lee yields back. I oppose this amendment. Any other members seek recognition? Ms. Salazar is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Once again, this new amendment undermines uh, the bill that we just introduced, H.R. 314. Why? Because it eliminates the reference to the Libertad Act. The Libertad Act is law right now, which is the one that codifies the United States embargo against Cuba. And that, that law, it, all it says is that Cuba could join the international community if it were to behave like a responsible actor, a democratic constitutional democracy. Once again, free speech, basic human rights, political activities, release political prisoners, 55 of them are less than 18 years old, allow and accept and assure their right to private property, make commitments to free and fair elections, establish an independent judiciary. Simple things, what we have that we aspire for Cubans to have and for the rest of the hemisphere to enjoy as well. So by uh, this amendment that was just introduced, it eliminates that reference to the Libertad Act, which enumerates what I just uh, presented and allows the president to unilaterally remove Cuba from the list. And once again, it should be in the hands of the legislature, in the hands of the United States Congress, not in the hands of the executive, because he could, he or she in the future could be motivated by political, um, by political interests. Thank you, I yield back. General Lady yields back. Do any other members seek recognition? Ranking members recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I support this amendment. A state sponsor of terror designation should not depend on your status on a well-respected human rights poll. It should not depend on your World Bank ease of doing business ranking. It should not depend on whether your country has good relations with the United States, but it should depend on whether you are a sponsor of international terrorism. Cuba was removed from the state sponsor of terrorism list in 2015 after an exhaustive review by experts at the State Department and in the intelligence community. It was the Trump administration, and they did not cite any new facts to justify its decision to relist Cuba in the warning days of his administration. By the way, it was during the same time this country's attention was still glued to the events of January the 6th. By the way, it's just the same president that had in Margo Largo, Orban from Hungary. It's the same president that had a bromance with someone who is on the state terrorist list, Kim Jong-un. It's the same president who had and said that Russia's intelligence was better than ours and accepted Russia's statements against the United States. Same guy. But he said nothing different in regards to when we were talking about Cuba. It sounds simple because it is simple. A state sponsor of terror designation should be about a state sponsoring what? Terrorism. I support this amendment. All of the states, as Mr. Sherman talked about earlier, that they say that Cuba supports, et cetera, in, in, on the Western Hemisphere, None of them are on the state sponsor of terrorism list. So I support this amendment, and I urge everyone to do the same. Will the gentleman back. yield? Uh, gentleman yields back. Uh, any other members seek recognition? Mr. Self, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mast, recognized. Thank you, Chairman. I just wonder if the uh, ranking member will define the word bromance for us. <laughs> I'm happy uh, to yield. Uh, yep. Yeah. Bromance is when um, someone says, I talked to him a lot. I got to know him very well. He was very smart, very cunning, very streetwise, and we spoke a lot. Actually, we spoke a lot, and I think we had a really, you know, a great relationship. I don't know if you remember when we started that relationship. It was very, very nasty then, but now 
we get along. Are you describing a, a bromance, a or is that the definition of a bromance? That's a bromance. Could, could you give me the definition of a bromance? A, give me the definition a of a bromance. From the, president, from the former president of the United States. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that's a bromance. This is, not a bromance. So, this is definitely not a bromance. So, but thank you for your attempt. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, gentleman yields. I yield. Further to, and thanks for that uh, enlightening definition. I, uh, Chair recognizes Mr. Self. Uh, for once, I agree with the ranking member. This is very simple. The year 2015 tells you everything you need to know about this amendment. Uh, 2015 is also the year that the JCPOA uh, was instituted. Um, and he said that uh, President Trump introduced no facts. We didn't need to introduce any new facts because they were already known. So once I agree with the ranking member, but everything that he argued argues against this amendment. Thank you very much. I yield back. Gentleman yields any further discussion. Let me just say I oppose this amendment. The definition of a state sponsor of terrorism is a country that has repeatedly supported acts of terrorism. I believe the Cuban regime embodies uh, this definition. Um, with that, there being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Ms. Uh, Kam Lager Dove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is Mr. not Chairman, agreed to. Roll call, vote. roll call vote has been requested pursuant to the chair's previous announcement. This vote will be postponed. Are there any further amendments? Mr. Jackson um, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Clerk shall discuss. I have an amendment at the desk. I have major concern with the uh, force. It, Mr. Jackson will, will um, uh, pause while your amendment's being uh, circulated, and then I will recognize you to speak on your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> the clerk shall report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 314, offered by Mr. Jackson of Illinois. At the end of the bill, add the following. Section 3. Without objection, section. further reading of the amendments dispensed with, the gentleman is recognized for five minutes on his amendment. Mr. Chair, I have major concerns with the FORCE Act because I do not believe that Cuba meets the requirements for a state sponsor of terror. I'm also concerned that we are trying to issue we are tying issues unrelated to terrorism to a state sponsor of terror designation. This is not how our foreign policy should work. I share the sponsor's interest in helping the people of Cuba, a country that I have traveled to several times, but do not believe this legislation is the way to bring about change on the island. My amendment is simple. It would sunset the legislation after two years it has been long the policy of my friends across the aisle to, sun, to support sunset on legislation. The very legislative protocol on the majority leader's website emphasizes the importance of sunsets and sanctions legislations put forward by Chairman McCall last markup also had a sunset. Even if we disagree on the underlying legislation, I feel that we should all agree that it is important not to lack to lock in a permanent policy that would be difficult to change when circumstances change or alter. I urge all of my colleagues to support my amendment. And for a point of record, I'd like to note that President Castro, or however you call him, died seven years ago. So when we talk about his regime, he has now been dead longer than the statute of limitations. 
Thank you. Gentleman yields back. Any further discussion on the amendment? Um, Mr. Lawler is recognized. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would just note uh, last week, Secretary of State Blinken said, quote, unquote, we are not planning to remove Cuba from the list. So for my colleagues who say uh, that they don't meet the definition, that they uh, are not a state sponsor of terrorism, uh, that uh, we on this side of the aisle are wrong about this, then you should pick up the phone and talk to the Secretary of State because he agrees with us that they clearly meet the definition, which is why the administration is not making any efforts to remove them from the list. So this bill would simply uh, make it clear uh, that the President and the Secretary of State, who have agreed with us that they are not removing uh, Cuba from the list, cannot do so uh, until such time as Cuba complies with the Libertad Act. So I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Any further discussion? Ranking members recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I support this amendment. You know, it would sunset the legislation after two years and would give Congress and the executive branch more flexibility should circumstances on the ground change in the years to come. You know, the majority leaders uh, have a legislative protocol on sunsetting legislation precisely because it allows Congress the flexibility to do its job. And that's what this will do. Circumstances change, Congress can move quickly because we've sunset and we had the opportunity to look at it. And with that, I yield back to balance my time and ask everyone to support it. Gentleman yields, uh, any further discussion on the amendment? Let me say that I uh, oppose this amendment. I believe it would be irresponsible to remove Cuba from the state sponsor of terrorist list based on an arbitrary timeline. So we must focus on their dangerous behavior until it stops. Um, there being no further discussion, the um, question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Jackson. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. The uh, ranking members recognize. Roll call vote has been requested pursuant to the chair's previous announcement. This vote will be postponed. Are there any further amendments? Pursuant to notice, I now call up H.R. 1684, the Haiti Criminal Collusion Transparency Act of 2023. The bill was circulated in advance, and the clerk shall designate the bill. H.R. 1684, a bill to require the Secretary of State to submit an annual report to Congress regarding the ties between criminal gangs and political and economic elites in Haiti and impose sanctions on political and economic elites involved in such criminal activities. Without objection, first reading is dispensed with. The bill is considered read and open to amendment any point. I now recognize myself for a statement on the bill. Now, Ranking Member Meeks and uh, Congresswoman um, Phyllis McCormick, I want to thank you both for introducing this measure to address the lawlessness and corruption in Haiti. Uh, we had a hearing you know, on this uh, very issue. Um, and it's uh, astounding how organized uh, crime and gangs have, have taken over, like these warlords, almost similar to Somalia uh, in Haiti. And, and I, that's why I strongly support this measure. I think the rising levels of gang violence, political instability, kidnappings of Haitian and American citizens, poverty remains exceptionally high, making Haiti the poorest country in the region and one of the most dangerous. Uh, to make matters worse, Haiti's been experiencing a resurgence of cholera since last October, uh, after no cases were documented for over three years. I remain uh, deeply troubled by the deteriorating health conditions, as well as the violent warfare being waged by these warlords, making it impossible for Haiti to find any f uh, stable form of governance. Um, as I said, it, it's very reminiscent of Somalia and the situation there. I think these corrupt oligarchs, political elites use these gangs as brokers to advance their own personal interest and economic financial at the expense of the people. The absent government combined with the total lack of law and order is a primary driver of illegal immigration into the United States. So this measure is welcome, a welcome step in shining a light on the criminal activity 
in Haiti and to look at to sanction those who are engaged in it. Specifically, it will require the State Department to examine and report on ties between gangs and the political and economic elites, establish visa restrictions, targeted sanctions against gangs, and Haiti's political and economic elite. While Haiti's challenges are difficult, the United States must remain committed to, to stopping this. Um, and I was actually quite shocked when we had our hearing to hear that our international law enforcement is virtually absent from Haiti and the, and the Caribbean, uh, for that matter. And um, Mr. Chairman, I look forward, I, not only do I support this measure, but I look forward to working with you on a future um, legislation to address this rising problem. And um, with that, I yield back uh, and I yield to you, uh, Ranking Member Meeks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for those words, and thank you for joining uh, with us. And I want to thank uh, Congresswoman Sheriff Phyllis McCormick for her hard work and, and on this bill also. Uh, you know, there are as many as 200 gangs in Haiti who now control at least 60 percent of Port-au-Prince. The number of reported homicides for 2022 increased by 35.2 percent. Without a doubt, Haiti is in a dire situation. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime report, released in 2023, report that increasingly sophisticated and high caliber firearms and ammunition are trafficked to, into Haiti amid an unprecedented and rapidly deteriorating security situation. Haiti also remains a transshipment country for drugs, primarily cocaine and cannabis, which mostly enter the country via boat or plane, arriving through public and private and informal ports as well as clandestine runways. Haiti's borders are porous, and the challenges of patrolling 1,100 miles of coastline and 243-mile land border with the Dominican Republic are overwhelming the capacities of Haiti's national police, customs, border patrols, and coast guard, who are severely understaffed and under-resourced and increasingly targeted by gangs. And while I've seen some forward movement recently with vital support from the Biden administration on police training this January and the announcement and rollout of sanctions last October, heavily armed criminal gangs are targeting ports, highways, critical infrastructure, custom offices, police stations, courthouses, prisons, businesses, and neighborhoods. And we need to continue to apply pressure. The ongoing political Powerless has led to further destabilization, which is being felt by Haitians across the country and those living in the diaspora. The United States should not and cannot be in the business of appointing leaders in sovereign nations. Last Congress, I made it clear that the pathway towards stability must be by coordinated and led, must be coordinated and led by the Haitian people. Our job is to listen to the people of Haiti work with our regional partners to add a semblance of stability in the country. This means continuing to investigate those involved in illegal trafficking firearm, of firearms from the United States to Haitian gangs. It means holding corrupt officials accountable by ensuring that these actors are not allowed to travel freely to the United States or own houses and other assets in our country. It also means assisting Haiti in finding closure and moving past the horrific assassination of former President Moise. This is why I introduced this bill, along with Chairman McCaw, and of course, Subcommittee Chairwoman Salazar, and Representative Surfalis McCormick, in a bipartisan effort to ensure that Congress receives regular reports on the role that Haitian economic and political elite play in masterminding and providing support for Haitian gangs. We must ensure that we do not repeat previous United States mistakes in Haiti. In order to move away from the political powerless that has gripped Haiti over the last few years, the Haitian people need to believe that their voices matter, that their government is there to help. We know that these conditions are causing the rise in migration out of Haiti as people seek safety at any cost. We have a duty to make sure that we identify and hold accountable those who relish in the chaos caused by supporting gang activity, using kidnappings and rape to control and silence communities, 
and it used coercion to bring youth in and around the port of Prince into the disservice of criminal activity. We cannot allow them to walk around, the gang leaders and those that are supporting them, to walk around with impunity. We must show the people of Haiti that they have the opportunity to take this in control themselves and not allow the gangs to rule and dictate, and that the United States will hold accountable those that try to travel back and forth from Haiti and commit these, committal, these uh, terrible acts and criminal activity. So I ask, and again, thank the chairman. Uh, I support this measure, and I ask everyone else to do the same. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields any further discussion on the bill? Let me say also the, uh, the women impacted uh, in Haiti is probably the most uh, egregious and disturbing you know, out of all of this. But uh, Ms. Kamlager Dove is recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I want to express my support for H.R. 1684, the Haiti Criminal Transparency Collusion Act, and I am so excited that this is bipartisan. The deteriorating humanitarian and security crisis in Haiti yeah. is unprecedented in the Western Hemisphere. It's one of our closest neighbors is experiencing what the UN High Commissioner on Human Rights describes as a living nightmare with sexual violence, kidnappings, displacement, and indiscriminate killing as part of an everyday life for so many there. The situation in Haiti is not receiving the urgent spotlight that it deserves. It rarely does. It rarely does. The Haitian people have a long history of resilience and grit in the face of relentless man-made and natural disasters. This is a country born out of the fight for dignity and human rights against colonialism, systemic racism, and slavery. Haiti can and it will persevere. This, amend this bill says that we should not write the situation off as hopeless and insurmountable. We must continue to support the Haitian people with intentional policies and concerted international action. I am glad that this bill takes a strong step in holding accountable those who are perpetuating and benefiting from the country's chronic insecurity. I hope that this is the first step and not an only step. I have to say I was at the UN yesterday and uh, we can do more, we should do more, we need to do more. That was what I heard. Um, at every meeting, and Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm not surprised that the international community has been absent in Haiti. You know, Haiti has always gotten a salty side eye from the international community because of its history of really fighting and winning against the French um, a long, long ago. And we have an obligation, we have an obligation to stay with Haiti, to go to Haiti and to be supportive um, of a country that needs us and that needs us to help in the right way. We cannot in good conscience stand by as a humanitarian catastrophe unfolds miles from our shores against folks who have African descent who need to see us. And I urge my colleagues to support this bill. I yield back the balance of my time. Generally, yields back uh, uh, any further discussion on the bill. Ms. Sherfulis McCormick. McCormick is recognized. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, for um, supporting this bill, and thank you so much, Ranking Member Meeks, for your leadership, especially when it comes to the Haitian people. Um, this bill is extremely important to the Haitian community and America, especially since we see many of these political elites are living in South Florida, are living throughout the United States, and are buying homes, shipping weapons every single day. It impacts us even more when we have a couple who's 33 years old living in my district who has been kidnapped. They were on their way in Haiti doing mission work to try and help the Haitian people, and they got on the bus and they asked for the Americans and kidnapped them. This is our first attempt in actually trying to resolve this issue, and I hope that we can work bipartisanly to make sure we have more initiatives so we can help the Haitian people, but also the Haitian Americans who are suffering from the situation. Thank you so much. General Lay yields back any further discussion on the bill. Mr. Lawler is recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank the ranking member for uh, introducing uh, this legislation. Uh, I have one of the largest uh, Haitian diaspora uh, in my district, uh, primarily in Spring Valley, New York. And uh, the concerns uh, about uh, the political and economic crises uh, in uh, Haiti are significant. Uh, and obviously, uh, when we look at what occurred uh, with respect to the assassination of the president uh, and the fallout from that, uh, as well as the uh, continued gang activity uh, and the links between uh, the Haitian political class and the economic elites uh, within the country and the impact that that is having on the residents of Haiti uh, and on the diaspora. Uh, I think this legislation is critically important. Uh, I think it, as we discussed with the previous legislation, it is important for the United States to take a leadership role uh, in our hemisphere and to be working with uh, our allies, but to also crack down uh, where there is corruption, uh, where there are uh, challenges. Uh, in our region of the world. And I think Haiti is a perfect example of that. Uh, we, we have a vested interest in it, and we need to be doing more uh, to help root out the uh, political corruption, the gang activity, and the economic corruption, uh, which has had a devastating impact on the people of Haiti. So I am fully in support of this legislation, and I thank the ranking member for bringing it forward. Gentleman yields back. Any further discussion on the bill? There be being no. Oh, Jackson. Mr. Jackson's recognized. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to also recognize, on behalf of the Haitian community, we have to keep it in perspective, if you will. The United States is a debtor to Haiti. Haiti has long been an ally of the United States. Haiti was the first country of Africans to have thrown off the yoke of colonialism and enslavement, and they were punished. Haiti didn't finish paying reparations back to its colonial powers until 1940s in the United States. And since then, we have had a no trade, no development policy with them. So Haiti doesn't come here begging. Haiti comes here looking for assistance. They are dignified people. And frankly, we lose credibility in the world and our standing when we have the poorest country off of our coast because we have been ambivalent and indifferent towards giving them assistance they have also a people of tremendous integrity, having recognized Taiwan. They don't sidestep the need for Taiwanese recognition. They've had the courage to do so and to peril it themselves by not getting any assistance from us or them. So I strongly encourage that we support our Haitian colleagues and <coughs> comrades. Gentleman yields back. Any further discussion on the bill? Mr. McCormick. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is very pertinent to uh, a discussion I had just last night from a guy who was actually my translator during the Haitian earthquake, uh, in which lots of people died. We did fasciotomies. We had a whole uh, mission field go over there and help them out. And we still see the same problems since before and after the earthquake a decade later. Uh, just a quick interaction. This is a guy who's been back and forth. He's a, he does his own church there. Uh, he is literally in fear of his life. Uh, when he comes over here to raise money for his mission, um, one of the interesting things that just happened just last night when he was texting me, he said, I reapply for the visa today. I pray they renew it. The worst case scenario is that they call me to come to the embassy for an interview in person. I would hate taking the risk to go to the Port au Prince. I pray that everything happens online. In other words, he fears for his life just to go into the capital to apply for a visa at an embassy. Uh, furthermore, when I said that, look, we need to go out, we need to make sure we have better security in this, this country right next door to us, um, he literally said, and this is the, one of the poorest people I know, that would be an amazing thing. That's what we need. We do not need money as much as we need security and peace. In other words, poverty is one thing you can deal with, but you cannot deal with a scenario where you may be kidnapped or robbed at any given time where your uh, wife who just gave birth can't get food because you're worried to even go to the store. Uh, the fact that we've gone in there with Marines before and we had the same problem later is egregious. Uh, we have 
I was just talking to my, my uh, fellow congressman and freshman, Ronnie Jackson, last night about how we have a United Nations for a reason. I'm not sure what reason, other than a lot of times they speak against the United States and against Israel. But besides that, I have yet to see them step up and actually do something in this very, very impoverished country that needs peace as much as it needs money. And with that, I yield. I'm going to yield back any further discussion on the bill. There being no further discussion, the committee will move to consideration of amendments. Does any member wish to offer an amendment? Mr. Perry is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I've got an amendment at the desk. Court shall distribute the amendment. Mr. Chairman, I reserve a point of order. Point of order is recognized. The uh, clerk shall report the amendment. <laughs> amendment to H.R. 1684, offered by Mr. Perry of Pennsylvania. Page 6, after line 18, insert the following. Including a list of each criminal organization assessed to be trafficking Haitians and other individuals to the United States border. Without objection, further reading of the amendments dispensed with. The gentleman of Pennsylvania is recognized for five minutes on his amendment. Thank the chairman. This amendment simply requires reporting, reporting on the rampant human trafficking coming from these criminal organizations to our already overwhelmed southern border. Having a better understanding to what extent these groups continue to traffic humans to our southern border is crucial to solving the issues we face at the southern border and quite honestly, any one of our borders. Criminal organizations commit heinous crimes against those they traffic and they literally have no regard for life. For it is not humane to operate an open border that encourages all the violence and dehumanization associated with human trafficking. And it's why it is crucial that we specifically have reporting language regarding human trafficking, because not only is it crucial to the region's security, but it's crucial to the United States national security. In closing, this amendment simply helps us understand the scope and severity of how Haitian criminal organizations are traffic, trafficking populations to our borders and uh, informs Congress so that we can make more informed and better decisions regarding solutions to those problems. With that, Mr. Chairman, I urge adoption and I yield the balance. So when yields back, let me say I support this amendment. Any other member seek recognition? The ranking member Mr. is recognized. Mr. Chairman, the people of Haiti and the entire region impacted by the crises Haiti faces deserve to know which organizations and individuals support destabilizing criminal activity, including those who take advantage of desperate people who are already extremely vulnerable and traffic them throughout the region making financial gains at every stop along the way. So I strongly support this amendment and ask my uh, colleagues to do the same. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Any further discussion on the amendment? There being uh, no further discussion, does the gentleman, uh, Mr. Cicilline, insist on his point of order? I do not, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the gentleman withdraws his point of order. Question now occurs on the amendment offered by Mr. Perry. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment is agreed to. There being no further amendments, I move uh, that the committee report H.R. 1684 as amended to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. Committee will recess for about 10 minutes, subject to the call of the chair. The clerk will send out a notice when we reconvene to vote.
committee postponed further proceedings on the recorded vote on amendment number eight offered by Representative Meeks, on which the noes have prevailed by voice vote. The question occurs on agreeing to the amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Representative Smith. Smith. Representative Wilson. Representative Wilson. Wilson votes no. Representative Perry? No. Perry votes no. Representative Isa? <laughs> Isa votes no. Representative Wagner? Wagner? Representative Mast? No. Mast votes no. Representative Buck? Buck? Representative Burchett? No. Burchett votes no. Representative Green? No. Green votes no. Representative Barr? No. Barr votes no. Okay. Representative Ronnie Jackson? Jackson? No. Representative Young Kim? No. Kim votes no. Representative Salazar? Uh, Salazar votes no. Salazar votes no. Representative Huizinga? No. Huizinga votes no. Representative Rottawagon? Nay. Representative Rottawagon votes no. Representative Hill? Hill no. Hill votes no. Representative Davidson? No. Davidson votes no. Representative Baird? No. Baird votes no. Representative Waltz? No. Waltz votes no. Representative Kane? No. Kane votes no. Representative Lawler? No. Lawler votes no. Representative Mills? No. Mills votes no. Representative McCormick? No. McCormick votes no. Representative Moran? No. Moran votes no. Representative James? No. James votes no. Representative Self? No. Self votes no. Ranking Member Meeks? Aye. Meeks votes aye. Representative Sherman? Aye. Sherman votes aye. Representative Connolly? Aye. Connolly votes aye. Representative Keating? Keating? Representative Cicilline? Aye. Cicilline votes aye. Representative Barra? Yes. Barra votes aye. Representative Castro? Castro? Representative Titus? Uh, Titus votes aye. Representative Blue? Aye. Blue votes aye. Representative Wild? Aye. Wild votes aye. Representative Phillips? Aye. Phillips votes aye. Representative Allred? Aye. aye. Allred votes aye. Representative Andy Kim? Kim? Representative Jacobs? Aye. Jacobs votes aye. Representative Manning? Aye. Manning votes aye. Representative Sherfalis McCormick? Aye. Sherfalis McCormick votes aye. Representative Stanton? Aye. Stanton votes aye. Representative Dean? Aye. Dean votes aye. Representative Moskowitz? Aye. Moskowitz votes aye. Representative Jonathan Jackson? Aye. Jackson votes aye. Representative Kamlager Dove? C. Kamlager Dove votes aye. Representative Costa? Costa? Representative Crow? Aye. Crow votes aye. Representative Schneider? Aye. Schneider votes aye. Mr. Chairman? Chairman votes no. Mr. Chairman votes no. Are there any other members in the room who wish to have their vote recorded? Are there any other members who wish to change their vote? The clerk will report the tally. On this vote, the ayes are 20 and the noes are 23. The noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. The committee postponed further proceedings on the recorded vote on amendment number seven offered by Representative Com Lager Dove, on which the noes have prevailed by voice vote. Question now occurs on agreeing to the amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Representative Smith? Smith? Representative Wilson? No. Wilson votes no. Representative Perry? Perry votes no. Representative Isa? No. Isa votes no. Representative Wagner? Wagner? Representative Mast? No. Mast votes no. Representative Buck? Buck? Representative Burchett? No. Burchett votes no. Representative Green? No. Green votes no. Representative Barr? No. Barr votes no. Representative Ronnie Jackson? Jackson? Representative Young Kim? No. Kim votes no. Representative Salazar? Votes no. Salazar, Salazar votes no. Salazar votes no. Representative Heisenga? No. Heisenga votes no. Representative Rodwagon? Nay. 
Representative Rodewagon votes no. Representative Hill? No. Hill votes no. Representative Davidson? No. Davidson votes no. Representative Baird? No. Baird votes no. Representative Waltz? No. Waltz votes no. Representative Kane? No. Kane votes no. Representative Lawler? No. Lawler votes no. Representative Mills? No. Mills votes no. Representative McCormick? No. McCormick votes no. Representative Moran? No. Moran votes no. Representative James? No. James votes no. Representative Self? No. Self votes no. Ranking Member Meeks? Aye. Meeks votes aye. Representative Sherman? Aye. Sherman votes aye. Representative Connolly? Aye. Connolly votes aye. Representative Keating? Keating. Representative Cicilline? Aye. Cicilline votes aye. Representative Barra? Yes. Barra votes aye. Representative Castro? Castro. Representative Titus? Aye. Titus votes aye. Representative Liu? Aye. Liu votes aye. Representative Wild? Aye. Wild votes aye. Representative Phillips? Aye. Phillips votes aye. Representative Allred? All red votes aye. Representative Andy Kem. Aye. Kem votes aye. Representative Jacobs. Aye. Jacobs votes aye. Representative Manning. Aye. Manning votes aye. Representative Sherfilis McCormick. Aye. Sherfilis McCormick votes aye. Representative Stanton. Aye. Stanton votes aye. Representative Dean. Aye. Dean votes aye. Representative Moskowitz. No. Moskowitz votes no. Representative Jonathan Jackson. Aye. Uh, Representative Jackson votes no. Uh, aye. Representative Kamala Grudov. C. Kamlager Dove votes aye. Representative Costa? Costa. Representative Crow? Aye. Crow votes aye. Representative Schneider? Aye. Schneider votes aye. Chair votes no. Mr. Chairman votes no. Are there any members in the room who wish to have their vote recorded? Any members who wish to change their vote? Clerk will report the tally. Oh, uh, Mr. Smith's recognized. Representative Smith? <laughs> Representative Smith. Vote. Now the clerk will report the tally. On this vote, the ayes are 20 and the noes are 25. The noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Committee postponed further proceedings on the record vote on amendment number six offered by Representative Jackson, on which the noes have prevailed by voice. Question now occurs on agreeing to the amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Representative Smith? No. Representative Smith votes no. Representative Wilson? No. Wilson votes no. Representative Perry? No. Perry votes no. Representative Isa? ISA votes no. Representative Wagner? Wagner. Representative Mast? No. Mast votes no. Representative Buck? Buck. Representative Burchett? No. Burchett votes no. Representative Green? No. Green votes no. Representative Barr? No. Barr votes no. Representative Ronnie Jackson? Jackson. Representative Young Kim? No. Kim votes no. Representative Salazar? No. Salazar votes no. Representative Heizenga? No. Heizenga votes no. Representative Broadwagon? Nay. Nay. Representative Rodwagon votes no. Representative Hill? No. Nope. Hill votes no. Representative Dav Davidson? No. Nope. Davidson votes no. Representative Baird? No. Nope. Baird votes no. Representative Waltz? No. Nope. Waltz votes no. Representative Kane? No. Kane votes no. Representative Lawler? No. Nope. Lawler votes no. Representative Mills? No. Mills votes no. Representative McCormick? Nope. McCormick votes no. Representative Moran? No. Nope. Moran votes no. Representative James? James votes no. Representative Self? No. Self votes no. Rep uh, Ranking Member Meeks? Aye. Meeks votes aye. Representative Sherman? Aye. Sherman votes aye. Representative Connolly? Aye. Connolly votes aye. Representative Keating? Keating? Representative Cicilline? Aye. Cicilline votes aye. Representative Barra? Yes. Barra votes aye. Representative Castro? Castro? Representative Titus? Aye. Titus votes aye. Representative Liu? Lou votes aye. Representative Wild? Aye. Wild votes aye. Representative Phillips? Aye. Phillips votes aye. Representative Allred? Aye. 
All red votes aye. Representative Andy Kim. Aye. Kim votes aye. Representative Jacobs. Aye. Jacobs votes aye. Representative Manning. Aye. Manning votes aye. Representative Sherfilis McCormick. Aye. Sherfilis McCormick votes aye. Representative Stanton. Aye. Stanton votes aye. Representative Dean. Aye. Dean votes aye. Representative Moskowitz. Aye. Moskowitz votes aye. Representative Jonathan Jackson. Aye. Jackson votes aye. Representative Comlogger Dove. Aye. Comlogger Dove votes aye. Representative Costa. Costa. Representative Crow. Aye. Crow votes aye. Representative Schneider. Aye. Schneider votes aye. Mr. Chairman. Chairman votes no. Mr. Chairman votes no. Are there any other members in the room who wish to have their vote recorded? Any members who wish to change their vote? The clerk will report the tally. On this vote, the ayes are 21 and the noes are 24. The noes have it and the amendment is not agreed to. There being no further amendments to dispense with, I move that the committee report H.R. 314 to the House with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the motion yeah, is agreed to. A recorded vote's been requested. The clerk will call the roll. Representative Smith? Aye. Smith votes aye. Representative Wilson? Aye. Wilson votes aye. Representative Perry? Aye. Perry votes aye. Representative Isa? Aye. Isa votes aye. Representative Wa Wagner? Wagner? Representative Mast? Aye. Mast votes aye. Representative Buck? Buck? Representative Burchett? Aye. Burchett votes aye. Representative Green? Aye. Green votes aye. Representative Barr? Aye. Barr votes aye. Representative Ronnie Jackson? Jackson, Representative Young Kim. Aye. Kim votes aye. Representative Salazar. Aye. Salazar votes aye. Representative Heisinga. Aye. Heisinga votes aye. Representative Broadwagon. Aye. Broadwagon votes aye. Representative Hill. Aye. Hill votes aye. Representative Davidson. Davidson. Aye. Davidson votes aye. Representative Baird. Aye. Baird votes aye. Representative Waltz. Aye. Um, Representative Waltz votes aye. Representative Kane? Yes. Kane votes aye. Representative Lawler? Aye. Lawler votes aye. Representative Mills? Aye. Mills votes aye. Representative McCormick? Aye. McCormick votes aye. Representative Moran? Aye. Moran votes aye. Representative James? Aye. James votes aye. Representative Self? Aye. Self votes aye. Ranking Member Meeks? No. Ranking Member Meeks votes no. Representative Sherman? Sherman votes no. Representative Connolly? Nay. Connolly votes no. Representative <coughs> Keating? Keating? Representative Cicilline? No. Cicilline votes no. Representative Barra? No. Barra votes no. Representative Castro? Titus? No. Titus votes no. Representative Liu? No. Liu votes no. Representative Wild? No. Wild votes no. Representative Phillips? No. Phillips votes no. Representative Allred? All red votes no. Representative Kim? Kim votes no. Representative Jacobs? Jacobs votes no. Representative Manning? No. Manning votes no. Representative Sherfilis McCormick? No. Sherfilis McCormick votes no. Representative Stanton? No. Stanton votes no. Representative Dean? No. Dean votes no. Representative Moskowitz? Yes. Moskowitz votes aye. Representative Jonathan Jackson? No. Jackson votes no. Representative Comlogger Dove? No. Comlogger Dove votes no. Representative Costa? Costa? Representative Crow? No. Crow votes no. Representative Schneider? No. Schneider votes no. Mr. Chairman? Chairman votes aye. Mr. Chairman votes aye. Have all members voted? Does any member wish to uh, change their vote? Clerk will report the tally.
On this vote, the ayes are 25 and the noes are 20. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the motion is agreed to. Without objection, the motion reconsiders is laid on the table and staff is authorized to make any technical and conforming changes. This concludes consideration of the measures noticed by the committee for today. I want to thank all the members. There being no further business to transact, committee stands adjourned.